Minister's plans for a bridge between Scotland and Northern Ireland. They say a range of officials are looking at this proposal, which was first put forward by Mr Johnson when he was Foreign Secretary. But just how realistic are these plans? Joining me now to discuss it, Wanda Lewis from the University of Warwick, who's an expert in structural engineering. And Wanda, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, so this idea has come back uh, to the forefront and it's being explored. Just how feasible is a bridge between Scotland and Northern Ireland? Well, um, I think it's a very exciting idea. It's not a new idea. Um, there's a question of cost, but um, structurally it is possible to build such a bridge. However, the distance of over 20 miles, it's actually greater than in the case of the, the previous proposal, which was the English Channel um, uh, bridge between France and, uh, and the UK. And um, there would be construction difficulties uh, because in the Irish Channel, you have um, in places, I think, a depth of water of 175 meters. Now, how would you construct foundations under such conditions, you would probably need to have a very heavy structure, probably uh, made of concrete. Um, that raises environmental issues. Um, but I think any idea that brings people together is a good idea. Um, very difficult to assess cost effectiveness. Um, the type of structure that would be feasible would be a cable supported structure, but it would require the frequency of pylons of about, well, less than one kilometre uh, apart. So we're talking about 30 plus pylons being built to the height of approaching 300 meters. Yeah, Wanda, I'm seeing problems so, before um, it's already started. It's a real started. construction challenge. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing problems, these construction challenges, uh, before we've even got, you know, to the first stage of planning. As, as I said, Downing Street have said that uh, there are people right. exploring this idea. You talk about the depth of the water, and just yeah. because it's forefront in our minds, yeah. let's talk about the weather uh, in this part of the world as well. We've just had Storm Kira. Um, how difficult will weather conditions be to, to construct a bridge like this? And, of course, to keep it open 365 days a year. <laughs> yes, yes, there would be, yes, there would be construction challenges um, associated with the climate change and environmental conditions and loading. Um, but, you know, if um, engineers don't um, raise to this that rise to these challenges, then no progress is made. I think it's a very exciting idea. I think it's um, worth uh, consideration. It would stimulate probably research into new construction methods, possibly new materials. Um, so uh, it's not an idea that should be discarded. Yeah, and, and, and something similar has been done before. The bridge between Sweden and Denmark being used uh, as the best example. In terms of the time that took to construct, how long did that take? And would it give us a similar idea of costs? Because that's the first question people are going to ask, and you've mentioned it yourself. <laughs> it's not going to be cheap and it's not going to be quick. Yes. No, no. Well, I, I've seen two cost estimates. One was 15 billion and the other 22 bil billion or 20 billion. Um, it may well be the case, the same case as with HS2, that a cost may spiral because um, without the proper um, environmental costs, uh, construction costs, um, it's very, very difficult to, to make um, accurate predictions. OK, but Wanda, I really interesting to talk to you. As you, said, think... as you said, it's a very exciting plan and one that could encourage new developments, new scientific exploration. But as you said, yes. uh, fraught with yes. challenges, as is any new uh, structural, um, uh, structural plans. Uh, Wanda, thank you very much for joining us here on Sky News. Wanda Lewis, their expert in structural engineering.